G'day, this is XQ again. Um, I just wanted to give you guys some thoughts and impressions of my first couple of games of Ignite. Um, I do also want to give you a slight little background uh, about myself. I actually am a former game designer, so I do, uh, and when I say game designer, I should be very specific here, of video games. Um, so I do have a little bit of uh, foresight to uh, balance and design and stuff like that. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, I played two games of Ignite. Uh, both games were four players. Um, we had two players swap out for the second game. Um, and yeah, basically both games were extremely different. We both used the, both games used the starting deck uh, in both games and the way they played was completely, utterly different. Um, the first game was really strange. It was kind of very balanced and the way people died kind of went down very equally. Um, and we basically ended up with uh, two people with three trophies and two people with two trophies. And there was literally one person left alive with one health point. And uh, one person died in the second last round and then two died in the last round. And there was only four characters left in that second round. Everyone had been equally killing each other. It was rather strange by comparison to the next round where um, one of the new players joined and he had all these characters left and everyone else was dead and it was just a complete slaughter fit. Uh, almost the two most extreme examples of the game that you could possibly find where uh, everyone was killed equally and then one person just completely dominates and kills it. Um, the sides themselves are really interesting. The races actually do play a really big difference in this game. Um, it's not like a lot of games where it's just a, a little bit of flavor text. They do feel and play differently. Um, down to the point where race selection based on the cards that are going to be on the table is a really big thing. Um, so you're not going to go, oh, these guys are my favorite and I want to play them all the time. Um, they're my initial thoughts uh, from that. Um, the other th game I want to kind of compare it to a little bit that I got, uh, someone brought it up to me. They walked up to me at the table and said, oh, it's just a, it's a, it's a skirmish game. Um, it, it, it seems like a non-campaign version of Wild Ascent. Um, and this person I'd played a couple of weeks ago, I played Wild Ascent with him. And I think it's a bit better than Wild Ascent from the gameplay perspective. If you're looking for a campaign game, then Wild Ascent might be what you're looking for, but I found campaign games are a lot harder to get to the table. This game is very simple to the fact that the person that won the first game with Pandas, mind you, was a, a, a young woman uh, that had never played a deck builder before. She picked it up and won the game, and I mean legitimately won. She didn't just like get helped or anything like that, she legitimately won. Um, and she'd never played a deck builder before, so that, that, that tells you not only the easiness to pick up, but also how well she did. Um, and as for Wild Ascent, I find the gameplay a little bit more simple. It's nowhere near a strategic. Um, if you've ever played Wild Ascent, it basically has powers as you go through that upgrade through the campaign, and you basically roll dice, and whatever the dice say, is, it gives you the abilities that you can choose to do against uh, an enemy. Um, and basically, it, it's like a uh, more of a gang warfare because you're it's it's the players versus AI. Where this is more, you're actually completely against each other. So for me, it's fundamentally a completely different game. But I actually think there's way more depth of strategy in this game because you've also got to deal with the cards, you're dealing with the deck you've built yourself. Um, you're also it's the timing of your attacks coming out. It, it, it's such a more depth and layered game than something like Wild Ascent. To, to the fact that if this game, if it wasn't for COVID and this game was out, I don't think Wild Ascent would be doing very well. Let's just put it that way. Um, if, if people want to compare them, that is. Um, and I had multiple people try and compare this, uh, as I said, at my gaming group uh, to 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 uh, tonight. Um, I've really enjoyed the two games I have. I'm really uh, eager to play more, quite honestly. Uh, it, it's simple, um, addictive, and, and the people that were there wanted to play more, but they were literally closing the uh, location, so we had to leave at my local club. Um, I've also, since then, uh, sleeved the entire expansion, and I'm even more excited to play that as well because that definitely adds some more uh, depth into the game. Um, we did have one, I, I actually got killed by an ice wall into a lava, 
Um, and you'd also realize in the starting deck, the only real hazard is lava, because you've basically got grass, forests, and lava, and that's it in the in the base game. Um, I will also say the game does focus a lot around that bazaar, um, and I even suggested to Darren during the week that in an expansion you need more objectives, things to go for. So I'm I, I like I, I suggested him more bazaars, but now I've had time to think. I thought like wouldn't it be cool if there's like a healing web or something that like other places to draw people to to fight and stuff like that because it's very just head for the center type of game. Um, the game itself is really kind of interesting with the village um we had a few people that never even left the village and and got and got a character killed and then they started to move in it's got a and because of that village and the bizarre thing it's got a really cool natural balancing mechanic where you can stay back and uh gather all the cards you want but if you stay there for too long other people get a way better deck because they're able to trash as well in the bazaar so it, it's got this really cool balancing thing like how long do i stay back out of the combat before i move in so, so there's no like sitting back can actually be really detrimental um but going in too early uh you can get you can lose health so it, it's got a really cool natural uh self-balancing mechanism just just it just works so well um and and knowing when to go in and step back so like in the second game we had this we got there was a an older gentleman called bruce playing as a um uh a, the lizard man and he sat right back and then just got like wailed on by um like two people really quickly and he went down to one guy and he's like what the hell's going on like he he just was out of the combat for ages, and then all of a sudden, because he had three characters and and most everyone else had lost one, everyone just started wailing him because he like just hadn't joined. Kind of interesting, um, yeah. But the look, the game itself is really really solid. Um, I think I'll go give a couple of negatives, right? So for me, I haven't found many. The only real negative in the gameplay myself is there are a lot of little rules. So the, the, while the basics is really straightforward, there's lots of little intricate, intricate oh, I can't even pronounce that, little little things that you need to learn. Um, um, and all my, most of the negatives that I'll have are actually things more around uh, a first time Kickstarter that are not actually essential to gameplay. They're things about that are outside the game. So to give, give you a little example, and these are such nitpicky little things, like um, the way the cards came, every pack was different. So I couldn't un I couldn't like organize them consistently like and that's such a nitpicky thing, uh, things like the way the the sleeves came in the packs rotated, so sometimes I don't know for the ant you know, as I said really nitpicky stuff but like just setting uh, the most annoying thing about this game is having a thousand cards to sleeve and it literally took hours like it took me uh, I think I did two lots of five hours to get it done, um. But if you're looking for negatives, like I'm trying to be balanced here, they're the only negatives you can find. And they're really minor, like super minor. Deal with them once and you never have to do them again. As I said, they're like just a, a production thing. Um, as for the game itself, I, I haven't really, other than like the, when you get into the weeds with some of the really nitty gritty rules, because uh, there are certain cards that block other rules and stuff like that. But it's like any game, once you've played it um, enough, you'll, you'll know... Uh, the changes to the rules and stuff like that. Um, I'm really, really happy with the night. Um, if you are, a fa it, it does kind of play what I thought it would play like. It, it is like I, I thought of back when I first played Dominion. I like this would be a really cool game if you could attack other people. Um, where really in Dominion you're kind of playing against yourself for points. Um, this, however, has the strategy of Dominion. But if if you don't have an attack card, if you don't have a move card, you can't do it. So trimming your deck uh, is way more important this than it is in Dominion. You're just trying to get those cards upgraded and kind of get those cards out. And so it makes that bazaar a really pivotal location. And um, that's why everyone is really pulled into the middle of the map. And it really focuses and pulls people into combat in a really strange way. If you do play video games, it's a little bit like those Battle Royale games where it uses the circle to pull people together. It's the same thing. They're trying to go for that objective, so it's pulling them all in. Yet you can sit back and get half that objective uh, just from the village itself, but you don't get the benefit of trashing the cards. And, that, and, that's, and that's the danger. So it boosts you at the start, but then it becomes a real problem because you have to trim the fat. And, and the first game I played, I had a deck, like, 
it would have been five times the size of my starting deck. And I I struggled because I just couldn't I hadn't I hadn't gone into the center and trashed those cards and stuff like that. Um but yeah, that it's there. I can I can I can taste the uh the uh strategy and I'm I'm keen for more. Um, if you do have any more questions, feel free to ask. I do know uh, for a fact someone wanted me to talk more about the uh, the holes where the daggers go in, and I did say I'd talk about that. Um, basically, with the way that they're produced, um, it's, a, it's a problem with the molding process, and I think that's why they've had to go with that. And so rather than it's like a hole that's gravity-fed, where you come down from the top and the dagger just kind of sits in the hole, it's um, they've kind of made it like it, pinces the dagger and what i mean by that is it's kind of got like two points so where you put the dagger in it kind of holds it like this um and if if those holes are damaged at all um basically they don't hold properly and 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 since i've talked with darren i can now go through and actually understand uh the process he's gone through if you actually understand injecting molding too how they've got to kind of be split off um you can't kind of make holes at an angle because you can't pull it out of the the mold essentially so this is probably why we've never seen this before in a game and we may never see it ever again um the only other way you could have done it would be actually have someone drill every single hole and no way that's going to happen because it's a manual process and it will be taken out and cost a fortune um that said um people that use the daggers were a bit afraid that they were going to break them um i do know for a fact that we actually have extra daggers that uh darren has included so uh that's not really a problem because if you break one or two you'll be fine but that said i've been pretty forceful with some of them and they have not broke i haven't broken a single one uh they w when they are on the table and the daggers are in them they look really sick though um yeah i, I like it's such a nitpicky little thing. It is. And, and, and I'm going to be honest, I'd rather the time it takes to put the dagger in than having tokens around the base or something like that you have in other games and you have to move them and, and that. So one little second of fiddliness to get the dagger in and then you kind of don't have to worry about it. But I think when you guys get your copy, you'll understand what I mean. It's a li It's just left to field because it's just not something I'm used to. Like stabbing daggers into a model is just... Uh, well, it's not been seen before um but other than that I, I think that's probably my biggest concern and and can be honest it's completely uh it's, it's kind of minor in the scheme of things um yeah other other things were just all um i think darren will kind of tell you they're, they're kind of similar to regular first time kickstarter things where they just haven't done it before um i had a little concern with the tray the models come in uh because uh, it, it, you know, I've been, t I've taken it out and put it back in maybe 10 times and it's getting a little bit ruffled and damaged, but that's just because of, again, it, it, it's such a big tray and, and, it, and it's actually got a fair, fair bit of weight in it. So that was always going to happen, but it's still functional. It's just, it, you know, splits and stuff. Um, I do struggle a little bit with all the sleeves on my cards, fitting it into the box of the expansion because the expansion box has as many cards, but it's smaller. Um, so I found that if I took my uh, player reference card, so the Orc and the Valkyrie out, and I put it into the main box, it had a little bit more space. Um, and I'm sure you'll find a workaround too. Um, anything other problems? Um, I, uh, I I will share one thing. I thought I didn't have enough sleeves, but it turns out that uh, my housemate hadn't given me an extra pack. But other than that, uh, yeah, I actually ended up with sleeves for everything. So... Um, with, and I had about five or six spare, I think, when I finished. Um, the sleeves themselves are actually, they're not too thick, they're not too thin, uh, and they're really good quality. I, look, I, I, I like them. In fact, they're some of the, my favourites that I've used so far, to be honest. Every game that I own. Um, I, yeah, if you have any more thoughts or questions that you would like me to answer, I'll feel free to. I did actually believe, leave this video an extra day just so I could... Uh, finish leaving the expansion and make sure all that kind of fitted in the box um yeah um all i can say is i'm I'm really keen to play more um again i've only had two plays so please take that into account but uh the two plays that i did have i uh, it played really fast uh there was not a lot of downtime especially in the first rounds because everyone's just buying right and then and then it slows down as the combat gets up but it's still really fast compared to some games like i would say most people's turns was 
less than 30 seconds, even in a really long term, right? Um, and, and you're always thinking, what am I going to do on my next turn? Um, and then someone's engaging you when you're being attacked and stuff like that. So there's this back and forth. You, you're never bored. There's never, there's, there's next to no downtime at all, um, which is really unusual in some of the board games I play. Like if you've played some of the best games in, or consider the best games in the world, board, uh, Gloomhaven, Gloomhaven has some, some serious downtime. Uh, by comparison to this. Um, I also ha ha found that was a bit of, uh, uh, let's go back to Wild Ascent, there was some, a lot of downtime while the AI was being worked out and stuff like that. None of that in this. Again, I haven't played the, the single player or the co-op. That might be a different cat or a fish, but yeah. All right, I hope that uh, gives you all my thoughts. I feel like I'm waffling at this point, so I'm going to love you and leave you at that point. I hope this kind of gave you some uh, of my insights. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I do feel for you guys having to wait because, as I said, it's usually me on the other end of this being uh, all the way down in Tasmania. I hope that's been great. I hope uh, if you've got any feedback or questions, leave them in the comments. And I can... Okay, guys. Catch gotcha. you.